Today we're going to look at the equations of lines and the different forms that they can take. So first we're looking at horizontal lines and vertical lines. Horizontal lines all have the same y coordinate. So if we draw one up here and say we have a line that goes through any point on here, let's call this 2, then we know that every single y coordinate of all of the points on there are 2. We have 1, 2, 2, 2, 3, 2, 4, 2, etc, etc and everything in between. They can have any x coordinate. So it makes sense that when we write down the equation of this line, we really just have to define what that y value is. In this case, this line would be y equals 2. And x can be anything, so you really don't need to even specify it. Now, all the points on the vertical lines are going to have the same x coordinate, but they're going to have any y coordinate. So if we had, say, a line here that's vertical and it goes through this point here, on the x-axis minus 5, then we've got minus 5, 0, minus 5, 1, minus 5, 2, minus 5, 3, and all the fractions and decimals in between going onwards forever to infinity and minus infinity in both directions. So this line is going to, if it goes through some point a, b, it will have equation x equals a. Now we know this goes through minus 5, so we call this line x equals minus 5. What does y equal? Anything it wants. Okay, so we've got those. Now, you're already familiar with gradient intercept form. It's really just a way of writing the equation of a straight line so that you're highlighting the gradient and the y-intercept. And the beauty of this is that when you have a line in this form, y equals mx plus b, if you know the gradient and the intercept, you can go ahead and throw them into this formula and write the equation of the line really simply. Or, if you've got the equation of the line, you can pretty much just read off what the gradient and the y-intercept are, and that will help you graph it. The things that we'd like to add in here, we've said here that m is the gradient, we know that. Let's look at what else it is. It's the rise over run of the line. We also have a formula for gradient, y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. And we've also recently learned that the gradient of the line is also equal to tan of theta, where theta is the angle of inclination. So, what we're saying here then, is that if we've got some line going up like this, then whatever this angle here is, let's call it theta, the angle isn't the gradient, but the tan of the angle is. And that makes sense because the tan of the angle is just, if you drop any line down, straight down from that line, till it meets at right angles another line that goes across, rise over run is opposite over adjacent. So it makes sense that the tan of that angle, the tangent of the angle, is going to be equal to the gradient. And we know that B is just the y-intercept. Now before we go any further, let's just consider what we've learned here. A vertical line has equation x equals something, so it's just a number. And a horizontal line has an equation y equals something. And our gradient intercept form looks like this. Let's just consider these Bs. Are they the same thing? If we've got a horizontal line and we know, say, that it's going through some point, we're told we've got a horizontal line going through the point 2, 5, what's the equation of the line? Think about where 2, 5 is, and then think, well, it's horizontal line, so it's horizontal, draw it in. Now, all of the points on that line have a y coordinate of 5, don't they? So it makes sense that this line is called y equals 5. Now, where does it cut through the y axis? At 5. So it turns out this b, in this case, is also the y um, intercept. Now, these two relate to each other closely. And this makes heaps of sense because what's the gradient of this line? Horizontal lines have a gradient of zero, don't they? So if you are going to uh, name a horizontal line just using this format, it would make complete sense because if the gradient is zero, then you've got y equals zero lots of x plus whatever that would be. In this case, it's five. Now, zero, lots of something is just zero, so you end up just with the y plus five part, and this part here all goes away. So you can see that these two relate to each other, and this is the exact same thing, it just has a zero gradient. But this is the one that's different, and this is worth noting, so that you don't try and find the equation of a vertical line using this method, and then end up scratching your head and wondering what's gone wrong. Now, the reason this method doesn't work is that the vertical line, it doesn't have a definable gradient, does it? Because when you do rise over run with a vertical line, the rise is infinite and the run 
is zero. And you can't have a fraction with a zero on the bottom. So it doesn't have any gradient that we can put into this formula. And then when we try and find what the uh, y-intercept is on a vertical line, either it doesn't go through the y-axis at all, in which case there is no intercept, and that would make no sense, or perhaps if it goes, actually it's sitting right on top of the y-axis, then it's got an infinite number of y-intercepts. So vertical lines don't follow this rule. And this also makes sense if you think back to our functions unit, where we gave various uh, graphed lines and curves and things a vertical line test, didn't we? And we said if the vertical line cuts them more than once, then they're not actually functions. So this vertical line is not actually a function, which sort of makes it make sense then of why it can't fit into this nice, neat formula, because this formula applies to functions, which are actually straight lines. And this one's not a function.